want to have their own space. And joining us now to discuss the politics of the fallout here, political consultant Sam Riddle and former State House Majority Leader Rocky Rechkovsky. And first of all, Sam, should they take the summer off or should they get this done? Come on, give me a break. Those guys don't do anything for the money right now. They definitely should work through the summer. But let me tell you something. What we really look, need to look at is how this governor and his Republican buddies cut taxes for their fat cat business corporate friends. 80, 67% or more in tax cuts. If we want money for the roads, we need to undo those fat cat tax cuts and quit placing the burden on middle class, working class people that can at least afford it. Oh, you went right for the politics. Over 5% goes to that. <laughs> right for the politics. You know, I mean, it's just the way it is. Robbie, it's you, the way it is. It's you, not politics, it's dollars. You gave your fat cat buddies, he who would be president. Sam, obviously, obviously you don't know anything Robbie, about the economy. Robbie, you're not in here, please. <laughs> All right, hold on a second, Sam. We got to hear from Rocky. Sam, I, actually, I was opposing this, and I was part of the group that actually fought against this incredible tax increase and these giveaways to a lot of these liberal special interest groups that you believed in. But here's the key. Earlier in the oh, section on. at the 4:30 time, we saw two rep a representative and a state senator talk about this. this Proposal one and talk about what their plan is next. Let's face it, their plan is plan B, and their plan B is going to be rolled out next week, and it's going to be tax increases again. We're going to be seeing a tax increase. Yeah, but tax at the increases pump. on who? Tax the rich. Tax the one percent who pay less than one percent. Sam, of let's say, right, hold, hold on a second. Sam, hold on a second. We got to let Rocky finish yeah, here. Not a problem. But here's the issue. The issue is how do we fix our roads right. without increasing taxes? Now. Uh, Pete Lacido, a state rep from uh, Shelby Township here, has a great proposal, and already it's being poo-pooed by the Lansing uh, status quo. And we need to look at proposals that actually do something without raising taxes. We talked to Representative Battaglia about that, and as a matter of fact, he didn't Trump. think that that had really any chance. What you are hearing from both sides, especially um, Representative Peter Battaglia talked about, was this idea of a gas tax. Is that, in reality, is that what you think will be part of this plan that ultimately... This next to plan, work? definitely. It's going to be, their plan B right off the bat is going to be a tax increase. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, from the, the resounding vote to, that these legislators got robbed on, on Proposal 1 yesterday, people were basically saying they don't want their increase, their taxes increased. In any way, look at the state budget that's grown tremendously over the cost of living. Hey, Sam, before uh, before we've got a $52 billion state budget, right? That's right. 20% of that budget goes into prisons. Right. We can look at that as a cut and also look at the system of justice where people who commit nonviolent crimes are often going to prison because of the profit motive in that industry. We can be much more creative out the box than we are. I, I finally agree with Sam. We're <laughs> fat cat corporate We both agree that we, we got to get more creative about this. Now, the governor said today he didn't think there was a, a specific mandate against tax Taxes. In fact, a recent poll response looks to back that one up. 64% of respondents to an Epic MRA poll said they would support a 1% increase in the sales tax, but only if they knew all that extra revenue would go to the roads, exactly. the bridges, and the transportation. So I want to go to Sam here. And without getting too political, Sam, let's just talk as a consultant here. Uh, does this po provide political cover that people are saying okay to some taxes? Well, there'd be some political cover, but for the fact that this governor who spent $10 million on a campaign spent it out of state. If you want support in this state, spend the money with in-state consultants, and maybe we can come up with some creative in-state solutions. The bottom line is, is that the people don't trust this governor. They don't trust Lansing politicians until they put forth something that is trustworthy. We're going to see more butt-kicking taking place. Obviously, Sam, as a political consultant, wants a piece of pie. Uh, no, th that's not what we should be talking about. We should be talking <laughs> no, about political consultants, Sam. If you we don't should be talking about say, Sam, we say, Sam. Sam. on that. You aren't going to spend it on the roads. Oh, hold on a second, I mean, Sam. Rocky, Rocky got, you have your say left hand. Yeah, it's real simple. Okay. The way to fix the roads, we first need to look at uh, the budget, the state budget that Sam was correct. It's $52 billion. It's grown over the cost of living uh, more than the rate of inflation. And Pete lacito has got a proposal that is workable. The problem is it's not very easy. It would basically require the representatives and senators to stay in a summer session. And, and we want them to work for us. Let's look at proposals that first keep the revenue neutral and don't tax people. 
you know, you said just real quick, you've got just a few seconds left. You expect a proposal next week yes. presented. Do you expect that to be a bipartisan proposal or a real fight? I, I think it will be a bar bar bipartisan proposal, and I think it will increase taxes. Be prepared for a tax increase from the state legislature. And this one will be one that we won't vote on because right. this won't involve the sales tax. All right. right. Sam and Rocky, thank you so much, very much for that. Thanks, Thanks for the Sam and Rocky. <laughs> very close. Sorry. All right, thank you both for your time. <laughs>
So there's lots of bills. But that's not the only bill. There's lots of bills out there that change some funding sources, cut some loopholes. Creating $1 billion within, with maybe a little revenue raise, is not that hard. And I'm not saying that we're going to seek a revenue raise. But my goal as the chair of transportation and having some great leaders on both sides of the aisle on the transportation committee, I believe we can get this done and do it right. Let me ask and you. Right. People well, want the money going to roads. Well, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's clear. Better, as a matter of yeah. fact, 64% in that poll that Jim Kurtzer mentioned said they would have been okay with that if they knew, a sales tax increase, if they knew the money was going to roads. Before you go, real quickly, one of your colleagues, Representative Macedo, Republican from Shelby Township, wants to use the interest from that catastrophic fund we've heard so much about, that sure. auto insurance fund. Where's your thought on that? Will that go anywhere? There's been so much controversy about that issue in general. I, I have... I have great rep uh, great respect for Representative Lucido. Uh, you know, being an Italian, both of us are part of the Italian caucus, so we stick together as much as we can. But that that plan is not feasible. If in fact, if in fact that fund generates that much extra dollars, that money belongs to the people that have been paying insurance and should be returned to the insurers of the of the state of Michigan. Under Governor Engler, a uh, hundred dollars was returned to the ta or to the car insurance people back then. So I'm not uh, keen on doing that. I believe that money belongs to the people that have paid that insurance, if in fact it's even there. Representative Patalia, thank you so much for your time tonight. We're switching on over uh, to Senator you, Jim Annick, the Democrat leader of the Senate. And uh, first of all, that special summer session, you willing? Are you going to go on the record now saying, yes, I will work this summer? Oh, no question about it. I mean, I think we can get the solution done before then, but uh, I'm willing to work uh, all summer, all, however long it takes to get this right. Representative Patalia said there, he sounded very confident, as, as you did just a second ago there, that something could be done. It's going to require bipartisan support, correct? And it's also going to require leadership. I think that's one of the most important things that uh, we all need to be thinking about is, well, how do we find a long-term solution that doesn't put any burden on middle class and working families only and make sure that the burden is spread equally across the board? And I think that's going to take real leadership and not, uh, not running from the problem. Now, it's great to talk about leadership right now. A lot of people are asking, where was the leadership going up to this? None of you guys were willing to take this on. Instead, you kicked the can down the road and let voters decide on this in a very, as everybody admits, convoluted bill. So where was the leadership to at least produce something that we could vote on? I think that um, I, I would take a little issue with that. Uh, two times the state Senate sent over a, 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 bill, a bill to the state house uh, that would have fixed the problem for the long term. Uh, there were solutions. Uh, it was supported by the governor, done in a bipartisan way, and in the Republicans in the uh, state house chose not to take it up. So, you know, we, at the last minute, uh, Republican leadership and the governor uh, came together with a proposal, and uh, you know, we supported it because we want. We, we think it's important to fix the roads, and uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't our first choice, but uh, sometimes you have to make tough decisions. And uh, so we we uh, Democrats have been there the whole time looking for solutions and trying to find real real solutions to this problem, and uh, we're, we're willing to still do that. Do you think that one of the real solutions will include an increase in the gas tax that we'll all pay at the pump, Senator? Well, I think we need to be, I think we need to be creative. I think if we learned anything from Tuesday is that the public uh, wants the leadership. They want us to make sure it's not on their backs alone. They want to make sure everyone has to pay the fair share. And if we look forward, uh, there shouldn't be a, a five-month fix or a one-year fix. It should be a, a five, 10, 20-year fix. And the way to do that is looking at things in a different way. And, and looking what the, what the issues are going to be like five, ten years from now, as cars are becoming more fuel efficient, uh, I'm not so sure if the gas tax is the smartest way to go forward. Now, there are uh, some proposals out there that say this could be done without raising anybody's taxes at all. Do you think that's possible? And the way they would do that is by gutting the school aid fund, cutting our uh, underfunded schools now, cutting local police and fire, and many other services that people uh, uh, people rely on. If you look at the same uh, uh, poll that you, you referenced earlier, Overwhelmingly, people do not support that. They want to see us come up with a real, equitable solution, and not, you know, not not band aids. That's, I think they're tired of that. And I think hopefully people learn learn their lesson from yesterday. All right, Senator Jim Ananek, thank you very much for your time today. And uh, again, both of them on the record saying they will work summertime here. Yeah. So there you go. We can put that on Jim's wall. We'll be asking your colleagues as well. Thanks to both of you tonight. Still ahead on the now Detroit, much more. And we'll have more on the continuing story on the funding for Michigan Roads. Stay tuned. We've got more just ahead.